Good afternoon or good evening almost now. I think everybody is pretty much checked in. So um, we've got a full agenda tonight. So and we have a hard stop at eight o'clock. So I want to make sure we stay on time. We have a lot of activities for you all to do. It's going to take some time to do those. So we would like to get started right away and uh, give as many people a chance to speak at the end as, as possible. So um, I'm Mike Kroll um, with Miller Leg and uh, Lumi Fuentes with Miller Leg. We'll be leading the presentation tonight um, along with um, with Brian Rhodes from True Club Solutions. Uh, he's going to be having a part of the presentation also. Um, so where we are right now in the in the presentation or in the in the process here for Ocean Breeze is that we are in a here we go. Okay. Um, here's the process that that uh, that we are following so far. Um, the first meeting that we had, so we've we've met with uh, and and gathered all the information um, from existing analyses. We did analyses of the of the existing facility, and we had our visioning workshop. That was uh, the first time we all met, or most of us here met. Um, so since that time, we have established a program um, that was presented in May, I believe it was, to the district. And from that information, we were able to develop a, a program for Ocean Breeze. And right now, um, so after that program was uh, developed, um, we have, over the last few months, prepared conceptual master plan alternatives for Ocean Breeze. And that puts us where we are right here in the little red dot, which is our conceptual master plan workshop. So as we go through the process, you'll see, you'll see um, we anticipate completing this around the end of the year this year. Um, but this is really a time that we're looking for input from you in the final development of, uh, of a plan for Ocean Breeze. What we're going to be doing tonight is really talking about, number one, the program and refining that program. You're going to help us refine the program that was developed uh, in May. Um, and we're going to have some activities to do that to help you guys, uh, to have you guys help us do that. Um, the next thing is, is that we're going to um, display some of the concepts. We're going to go over some of the vision and concepts for Ocean Breeze. And then you're going to follow up, then we're going to follow up with some activities for you to have some comments and, and have some uh, input on those concepts. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, um, workshop here with uh, speakers. We're going to have some speakers uh, from the public. So if you desire to speak, there were speaker cards. If you could please fill those out and write that down so we could add, add you to the list and hopefully get to everybody who desires to speak uh, tonight. So. Um, how did we get to where we are right now? Um, as I mentioned, we developed a program for Ocean Breeze. And that program was developed and, and presented to the district and approved by the district in May. Um, that program was developed through uh, a, a series of information that we gathered. Um, there was this statistically valid survey that was sent out and responded to. And we had over 600 and some uh, responses to that. Um, we also had an open link survey, which was an online survey. Anybody could come in and uh, put their input into this survey at that point. We also reviewed a previous uh, RFI that the district uh, had put out um, requesting information on insights uh, for the development of Ocean Breeze. We also reviewed the city's needs assessment that was done and prepared. Um, we talked to the elected officials at the district as well as the, the city and also key, um, um, key departments and managers of those uh, uh, from both the district and the city. Um, we also talked to the uh, Golf Association and Keep Golf in Boca group. And then most importantly, we had the public workshop, the last public workshop where we took that information from, from that. And these are the, the things that I just mentioned. Um, actually, it was 566 people that responded to the to the survey. Um, so again, these are this is where we got all the information that we developed that uh, that program with. And from that information, what we did is we quantified that and developed uh, a priority for the program at Ocean Breeze. 
Um, it really talks about the various elements that uh, that are part of the program, everything from trails to nature preserve, golf courses, tennis, all those types of uh, amenities and facilities and activities. And this is the uh, the information or the folks that we talk to as we uh, as we develop that. So this is built a priority uh, for the program that we are going to that we're going to talk about and, and have here in, in Ocean Breeze. So in essence, here were five areas that the program revolves around in Ocean Breeze. There are passive uses. Those uses include trails, cycling, nature preserves and open space, open green space areas, picnic areas, as well as botanical and butterfly gardens, community gardens, and public art. We also had social areas that, that uh, played a key role in the, in the program. And those social areas revolved around playground areas, dog park, a center, and a central green. We also had golf as a, as a key component of the program. And that talked about including a golf course, a golf training facility and driving range, and a clubhouse. And we also talked about indoor facilities, um, an indoor facility that would be a field house, a potentially a restaurant and cafe, as well as indoor uh, courts for racket sports. Then we also had active facilities. Active facilities included pickleball, tennis, and swimming pools. So, as I mentioned, this is going to be a very active uh, workshop, interactive workshop. Our first activity is going to be help us um, refine those program elements because there's some things that we wanted to discuss uh, on those. And the first one we want to talk about is the golf component. And Brian, I'm going to have Brian talk about there's 10 different elements of golf that we would like for you to help us uh, refine. So Brian's going to kind of explain those aspects of golf uh, elements. We're having issues on. Okay. All right. We're connected there again. All right. Great. So I'm going to let Brian talk about some of those key issues in the golf. Perfect. I'm Brian Rhodes with True Club Solutions. National Golf Foundation states that 10% of our population plays golf, which is amazing to me because it's such a great game. I think it should be way higher than that. Obviously, I'm a golfer. I grew up with the game. And so I'll speak a little bit to the people on Zoom. And I know I've been in this room before and majority of people here are golfers, but I'll also highlight some things so the non-golfers understand what we are presenting here. An executive golf course is really a traditional golf course, just in a shorter variant. So the yards, yardages normally range from four to 6,000 yards for 18 holes. So we can cut that in half for a nine hole golf course. The par is gonna be anywhere depending on the architect, between par 30 and par 36. It is a great entry point for golfers. So juniors growing into it, people just starting the game, it's a fantastic entry point to learn the game and get started. Executive golf courses also, Lord willing, is a nice place to exit the game or grow in, into it. We all grow into an executive golf course at some point in time, hopefully. In this market, an executive golf course like this would probably do about 40,000 starts. So it would be utilized. That brings us to the next function or phase, which would be a short course. So these range anywhere from three, six, nine, 12 holes. And this, I think what we have here and mostly it's six, nine and 12, they gain you know, each, as they progressively have more holes, they are more complex in golf. So the six holes would be roughly starting about 75 yards and moving up to about a maximum of 200 yards on a 12 hole course. So that would use about three quarters of an acre for the smaller ones and up to an acre and a half each for each hole. 
So when we look at this for one of the challenges we have for short courses is bringing it back to a starting point and an exit point. So all the holes begin and enter near the clubhouse. By doing this, we can end up with more starts. We could get two to three times more utilization on a short golf course than we could on an executive golf course. So the market trends are moving this way. I'll mention it a little bit more when we get further along in the presentation. And it also fights one of the biggest barriers that we have to golf, and that's time commitment. By having a short golf course, we can go in a quicker amount of time. So there are some benefits there. A lighted short course, obviously, if we have lights, we expand the operating hours and we should expand utilization. The samples up here show that lighting has come a long way. So the goal is to not be intrusive to the neighbors, to have it lit, and it gives a new experience. I mean, anytime we add lights, you get to play golf at night. There's not very many places you can do that in this area. It's also very nice at night, especially in golf season. You know, come January, it gets dark pretty early, five, six o'clock. So there's certainly some aspects there. The driving range, the picture here shows a very tra traditional driving range where people can come out and practice and learn to play and move forward. It's something that is market wise since COVID is leading the country in driving range growth is really growing. The utilization is way up on ranges. Lighted driving range, same kind of similar things. If we add lights, we add to the hours and we add the utilization and it brings a different experience. Obviously now you can go practice after work when it's dark or wait till it cools down on days like today before going out. Golf entertainment venue. Don't want this to come across as top golf because it would be one level in this area, probably 30 bays. A couple of those bays would be designated just for teaching and learning. It brings in games. So it brings in an entertainment value to golf. When I think of this, it's kind of like bowling alleys. It used to be dark, dingy, smoky places. Now they're entertainment centers. They're very welcoming. They're there to have fun. So, and there's a lot of games. It's not, and you can improve your game. It's also something to work on. You can have top tracer like they show on TV. You can follow the ball. You can really dial in your golf game. You can also just have games for fun. So it really expands it, the market. Top Golf says that 70% of their customers do not identify as golfers. So you're able to move forward really and bring in a lot more people to the facility. Picture here is a standard putting green. This is very traditional. It's supposed to mimic the golf course, both in undulation and in green speed. It's a nice place to practice, spend a few minutes before you go out and play, get used to what you're doing. Short game areas, chipping and bunkers. These are vital to learning centers and vital to improving your game. A lot of our private clubs have put in these areas and then they've actually expanded out and grown them into short courses. By doing that, because it was a demand need, they were having so much fun with the short game area, going back, going 75 yards or 100 yards, then they moved forward and really moved, moved into creating the short course. Obviously on short courses, there's several examples, you know, probably the most famous is the Cradle in Pinehurst. Uh, Pebble Beach just put one in. Again, it, it just creates, it goes around the time commitment and gives you golf in a different experience. Putting course, these are fairly new. I kind of think of these as mini golf on steroids. You're playing a hole just with a putter. The undulation is fantastic. There is a lot of undulation, but there is no obstacles, right? Tiger Woods just started a venture of this called Top Stroke. Their market research that shows it's even more than Top Golf, right? 
they're getting in 80 to 90 percent of the people that utilize the facility don't identify as golfers. So it's giving them a golf experience, something that hopefully we can grow the game and move them forward. It's something for all ages that can have fun. Everyone can basically walk around that scenario and putt, go through a putting course, no matter if they're three or 93. Golf performance facility. I know that we've had some questions about a golf performance facility. On this, it's moving forward. It's you know, a great teaching and learning center. Again, something that's just expanded during COVID times, really moved forward. I know we have some people from FAU. This is very similar to, you know, some of the back of the ranges that we have at some college facilities. So there would be technology there so they can better their games and improve. All right, now you're all wondering why you have that little four stickers, four white stickers. So in the back of the, of the room here, we have three sets of, of exhibits on the wall. And on the top left are the yellow bands, okay? And if you look back there, right where Jessica's pointing, okay? So those are the, the yellow bands. You're gonna have, you have four stickers. And what we want you to do is we want you to put one white dot on each of your four most desired aspects of golf that you feel that would be best for um, uh, Ocean Breeze. So um, if you would go back there, so one dot on each box. You don't have any dots? We're going to need some dots. Okay. Hand up, hand up, she's coming. All right. Okay. All right, so you can go to any one of those three, put one dot on up to four of those, uh, those items for golf, and one dot per, per item. Okay. Hello, everybody online. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for your patience. We're going to be launching some polls. The first poll that we're going to be launching is for sign-in. And you will see it pop up in the common area, pop up on your screen.
if anybody's having difficulty seeing it pop up on their screen, please write in the comments. Your name and an email if you wish to share. And I will start launching our first uh, activity with all the options as well. Please select up to four options to so be consistent with the on the actual in person, but you're able to select multiple choice of the 10 options given for the golf components. All right, I'm going to be taking questions. I see some people have their hands raised. Uh, we'll unmute you. Barry, if you wish wish to speak now, unmute yourself. If you also have any questions, please type them up in the comments. Why did you call on me? I, I, I didn't say that I wanted to speak. Oh, I saw your hand being raised. Uh, yeah, it was to ask uh, why we, how we uh, chose the, the, um, on the poll before you, before you told us. Okay, so my I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Okay, thank you. Tony, do you have a question? I have your hand raised. Yes, I have a question. Typically, what um, do we know what kind of hours um, those lighted golf courses go? To be frank, I live I live right um, next to space, and uh, I don't know if I want all these high-powered lights to kind of go when, so, you know, late at night. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, that all depends. It, it won't be super late. It will okay, be monitored. It looks like it's almost everybody's done. Like the, yeah, so it's not going to be like 10, 11 o'clock at night or anything, right? No, no, no. And okay. also, too, with LED technology, most of these, these lights will just be towards the, the amenities. They won't reflect, um, you know, light pollution towards the homes either. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're going to start shortly the next phase. Everybody's uh, sitting down now. But Doreen, if you have a question, now's the moment. And I see Natty as well. But mm -hmm. uh, I can't seem to find the, uh, the chat seems to be disabled. I can't seem to find anywhere to write comments. Your com there will be a, a poll at the end to write comments. Um, as the same as everybody on, on in person. So you could write your comments towards the end of the presentation. And if you okay. wish to speak, there will be a, a, a point for that as well. The, the poll didn't come up for me though either. So I don't know. Okay. It's uh, actually working. Yeah, I mean, everybody, I've seen uh, oh. various, various um, responses already. It should, you should see it. Mm. It should show up on your screen. Yeah, it only has the okay. presentation. Okay, okay, well. Well, either way, I, I could share afterwards. Um, Doreen, I have your contact yes. information, the poll, and I'll leave it open. So afterwards, you could do it completed as well if you're having difficulties. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys would like to take a seat, we're going to go into our second element of program. Can everybody hear me? Okay, so our next program is, is trails, passive use. So some of these five options we're going to be presenting are walking leisurely, trails for walking, for cycling, the option for mountain biking trails, for multi-purpose trails, which includes uh, walking, jogging, or a cyclist as well as opportunity for fitness trails, which will include um, fitness stations along the sides. So you'll be given two stickers, and then you're going to select uh, place uh, two options on your top two, and you're going to be one dot per box, okay? And then there's, did everybody get a green sticker? Okay. Okay. The young ladies in the back, it's Isa, Jessica, Marina, and Kathy. They'll be handing out green boats as well. Thank you guys online. I'm going to be launching the poll for the trails.
And as everybody's finishing up this, I just wanted to let you know that we do have 30 plus people online and they're doing the same activities, but virtually online too. So they're doing, they're doing the same samples and putting the same input as you all are in person here. So just wanted to let you know that. We'll do one more minute until we get back in our seat and we'll do the next group. Okay, looks like everybody's done. All right, we're going to go into our next, where it's going to be our activities inside our, where we're going to pick our elements for our, our field house, right? So we have multi-purpose rooms and what, yeah. So for multi-purpose room, this could be any type of exercise could be conducted inside this room. It could even be used afterwards for to put a couple chairs or in there or even have a, a different type of class as well so this is what a multi-purpose rooms it serves you could have it as teens for for a program in there then you could have a senior programs in there so it's an array of things that um, go into a multi-purpose room you have a multi-purpose gymnasium so you could have pickleball courts in here you could have basketball courts in here as well so it's multi-purpose gymnasium and a gym or weight room. Then an activity room, which this is more in particular for programs involving arts, music, something more educational, or even a bit of lectures. So something that um, participants are actually using uh, apart from maybe an exercise activity. And then another option is if you wish to have all of these types of like in elements inside your field house. So at this time, you're going to get two magenta dots given by the ladies in the back of the room, and you're going to have, uh, please put a dot per, um, per, your, per box, please. All right. At this time, you guys heard me on online. I'm going to launch the poll for the field house. I activated. Make sure the common area chat is activated. If anybody's still having difficulties, uh, please raise your hand. Natty, I, at this point, I unmuted your, allowed you to speak. Could you please uh, unmute yourself? We have a question. Hi, yeah, um, our question was in regards to previous polls, we joined a little late. Uh, how would we be able to respond to those? Okay, if you go to the chat, um, you'll be able to see them. They're still activated, so you can still vote on there.
Yeah, I don't see the ones before we join. Oh, you don't see the ones? Be okay, so I'm going to launch them again. Just Thank you. Uh, let's see. I'm going to share the links as well for all these polls so you could still have them up until probably later tonight in the chat and you'll be able to activate them as well. Thank you. Okay, maybe just one more minute on this one. Okay, looks like the next round of dots is now being circulated. Okay, the next, um, the next one is going to be, Boomy, you're good. Okay. Well, this is for the racket club and you have some indoor tennis, some indoor pickleball, some outdoor tennis, Oops. outdoor pickleball, and then the option of all of them combined. So a little bit of everything. You get some indoor pickleball, indoor tennis, and then outdoor pickleball and outdoor tennis. And then you, for this, you're gonna receive an orange sticker and you'll have two stickers. Please select your top uh, favorite two elements. And then just make sure you're putting one dot per box.
me. The next poll that will be launched would be the racket. I'm still going to share all the links for all of these if you want to go back to the original ones as well. Just bear with me before the end of the presentation. We'll have it all up. Okay, at this time, you should have seen more of the polls again reopen. Um, you should have those available. If you still don't see them, please write in the comments.
All right. So we're going to go on to our next, which is our aquatic center. You're going to have the same options similar to the racket club. You're going to have indoor swimming pools. So just want to let you guys know, you have to think about the size too of the building when you're selecting an indoor. And outdoor pools. And you have some fun splash pads. And a combination of outdoor pools with splash pad. And then a center that would have it all indoor, outdoor, splash pad combined as well. And now you're going to have a blue dot. Some of you already have them, already putting them up there. So you're going to have two dots. Please pick your two favorite options. Again, one dot per uh, block. All right, I'm going to launch the aquatic center elements question. You guys will see it in just shortly. Okay, I have Sil. Do you wish to speak now? Please unmute yourself. I have a raised hand for CIL. I've unmuted you if you wish to speak now.
Nope, you're not hearing anything because everybody's we're with the speaker off. There's a lot of noise inside the room, but you would hear something in just a few, a few minutes. Everybody's sitting down right now. Can you guys listen? There we are. We're going to move into our next um, and final element program. Uh, this is uh, playgrounds and I'll explain a little bit of these. Um, we have nature play and why we mean by nature play. It's more organic materials like logs and rocks that the kids could be able to interact and play with. We have themes. This is more taking care of their imagination by a sailboat, sometimes a train. It's more of a theme playground throughout. Inclusive play. This is for uh, not only just for handicapped, this is inclusive for kids of in within all the spectrums. And they will be able to play amongst um, all their friends. And then we have free play. So this is more of the kids using their imagination and it's not a sailboat, you know, they just have cubes or something and they're be able to use their imagination to create the self play and imagine they're on a sailboat, but it does not look like a sailboat. So this nurtures more of the creative side of the kids. And then we have fitness play where it's a combination of fitness obstacle courses as well. And this is kind of more for all exclusive for all ages, not only children, but adults could um, as well be included in this, uh, these playgrounds. Right. So at this time, you're going to have two red dots. Please go again and choose your two top favorite uh, programs, elements, and just one dot per box. If you do not agree with any of the options, please don't place the dot. Um, and if you guys care for it, you will have an area for comments and to speak coming up. Your top playground pro program elements poll has been launched. Dale, I see your question on the, an assessment of what program is wanted, um, golf or tennis or pools. Uh, just a, 
inform you at the beginning of the presentation, we covered it over. Um, you can visit our website at our Ocean Breeze Master Plan website. But the program has been chosen from an array of different activities we've done in the past. So there was a previous workshop that that's where it came from. There was a survey, uh, a statistically valid survey, as well as an open survey. We went with um, the city as well as we met with the commissioners of the district. So this selection of the program has been previously selected um, through our planning process. If you wish, you could see our first workshop video and the results as well as uh, the last presentation where we presented to the commission um, selecting the program based on all these elements. Okay, all right. Thank you all for doing that. That's the program end of the uh, of this workshop. Now we're going to get into the actual concepts um, that we've developed so far um, for the Ocean Breeze project. Now, some of the things that we looked at as we were developing these concepts include uh, density. There's different residential density. Obviously, we have multifamily with the condominiums, typically shown in the in the purple signature, and then the single family homes in the in the yellow signature. So these are things that we considered as we were developing the the concept plans. There also is, and I know somebody talked to me earlier tonight um, regarding streets and such. Um, there's a street hierarchy. Obviously, I-95 is really high intensity. Um, and then we have Yamato, uh, Dixie, as well as Clint Moore slash Jeffrey and 2nd Avenue, who are um, kind of secondary type streets, still a lot of traffic. And then we had the residential streets um, within the community shown here in the yellow. So kind of a hierarchy of, of streets, uh, the street network. We also looked at the historical activity nodes where Ocean Breeze had the highest amount of kind of activity from where the clubhouse was, where the hotel was, that type of thing. So we wanted to just kind of make sure. And that was obviously at the at the intersection of, of Second Avenue and, and Jeffrey. Some of the other things that we looked at were environmental components. Um, there are uh, a great deal of um, existing vegetation or trees on the site and some of the you know we really would want to embrace and, and save as many of those trees as possible um, that are within the site but we also have some water bodies and those water bodies if we can preserve those to make sure we maximize the, our, our water our surface water out there to really diversify the potential recreational amenities uh, within the community or within the within the park that's uh, that's a goal and also those water bodies are critical for drainage so we want to make sure that the All right, so concept A, um, as we mentioned, we had a program that we had developed and all the items uh, in the top here are shown as the, the program elements um, and they have a number assigned to them. 
And what we thought would be the easiest way to kind of communicate this to a crowd like this is really look at Ocean Breeze as four quadrants. Uh, there's a southeast quadrant, or southwest quadrant, northwest quadrant, northeast quadrant, and a southeast or southwest or southeast quadrant. Okay, so this is um, uh, our approach uh, that we took. Um, for and we developed five different concepts uh, for ocean breeze. So if we start in the northwest for concept A, we looked at that as more of a, a, a passive area. That area would include a botanical as well as community garden area, potential dog park, as well as open space and a playground. One of the things that we wanted to do that we thought was was lacking, and as we see the change in, in some of the community here um, with younger younger families and younger children, is that really there aren't a whole lot of play facilities for those for those children. So in each of the four quadrants, wherever we could, we could uh, we wanted to maximize the potential for child children's play, um, so that you wouldn't have to cross the street for the children to to play. So that was one of the things. So you'll see playground in, in many of the quadrants as, as we could. Um, also in the northwest was a cafe, a potential restaurant or cafe that we have there. In the northeast quadrant, again, this is uh, this quadrant right here, north of Jeffrey Street and east of uh, 2nd Avenue. What we looked at there was a racket club up there as well as an aquatic center. And one of the reasons that we looked at those opportunities is they can generate some noise and, and, and activity. And so we put those actually on the east side against where the, FA, the railroad is to minimize the impact upon uh, residents. Also in that area is open green space and a playground. Southeast quadrant, this area here, this area here. Um, this would be an area that we see could have a, a field house as well as a central green, a large open green space that would be typically just open, open area, but could be used for um, um, events, uh, art shows, those types of things uh, in a, in a, on a regularly scheduled basis. And then um, open space as well as a playground facility in this, in this area also. Then in the um, southwest quadrant, this is where we thought that this would this would facilitate a short course. As Brian mentioned, that would that short course here would be a three, six, and nine hole um, uh, facility. Would also support a driving range as well as a short game area and a golf clubhouse. So, as I mentioned before, we looked at the historical uh, um, activity nodes. And this is where, if you can see the plan underneath here, these red blobs um, really show where the activity nodes are going to, are, are proposed as part of the concept A plan. One of the other things that we wanted to look at was because Ocean Breeze is so large, it's over 200 acres. We wanted to make sure that if you access the, the park, where could you get in a minute walk? Where is it comfortable for you to get from where you enter the park and access the park? So you can see what we did is these are the access points here, typically in the blue with the blue arrows. And this red signature shows that if you entered the park at that location in about a minute, you could walk to any area within the red. So pretty good access. And then we said, OK, well, let's look. It's really important, you know, how do we get access a little bit further? So in five minutes, once you enter the enter into the park, how much of the park could you access in, in five minutes? So this, this here shows the areas that you would be able to access in, uh, in about five minutes. We did not put those walkability, uh, accessibility areas over the golf course because that would be more of a restricted use. You wouldn't just want people walking within the golf course and such during the during regular operation. So again, to provide good accessibility for the public in these areas. The second um, concept that we did is concept B. Again, I'll just walk through each of the quadrants uh, with you. Southwest quadrant, Again, a short course, 
but that course now spans from the southwest into the northwest also. Okay, and then you see the difference between the previous short course and this one is this is a six, nine, and twelve. Okay, it's a larger, more holes on this course. Also supports a driving range, a short game area, and a clubhouse in that southwest quadrant. In the northwest quadrant is the the another portion of that short course that I mentioned here in the yellow, and then a dog park as well as open space and uh, green space and, and a playground area. In the northeast quadrant, again, racquetball, or I'm sorry, racket club, kind of up in that upper northeast area, the aquatic facility down on Jeffrey Street, as well as open green space and playground area um, in the northeast. And then in the southeast, uh, uh, the field house, a central green, as well as the southern half of this area is the botanical and community garden areas. And then there also is open green space and playgrounds in that southeast quadrant. That's where vehicles would potentially access those areas. Um, so these are proposed access points from um, Jeffrey or Clintmore, um, and there's an access up there off of um, that internal roadway for um, right up here. So this is a potential access into the south, into this south parcel. It's, you go, you can go in and out at that location. This, that, that, this is the entrance point for this parcel. So you can come in here and out of here at that point. It will be lined up with that, with that roadway on the north side with the drive to the north. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's concept B. Go to the next. Again, these are the areas where there are now our activity nodes. Our activity nodes are more focused in the southeast quadrant and the northeast quadrant. Next. And accessibility. How far can we get into the, into the park uh, from a one-minute walk and then a five-minute walk? Next. So again, pretty good access throughout the entire park in five minutes and just a short five minute walk can access the entire park. All right, so I just want you guys to know too, you guys will be able to comment on all these. We'll be by the concepts if you have questions. So just uh, we'll bear with us and we'll, we'll go over all this. So for concept C, we're looking into our uh, golf component more on the north, um, the southwest and the southeast quadrants so this is an opportunity uh, for the driving range to be on your southeast quadrant closer to the train tracks um, not so heavily residential but that's kind of the idea um, and this southeast quadrant you will also have the uh, for a playground as well as a short game area and then on the southwest you'll have your an, another short game area, a clubhouse, and an opportunity again for another playground. So our fun uh, areas for the Northwest Quadrant will have our field, um, oh yeah, and the golf course for this option is actually a nine hole executive course. And then for the Northwest Quadrant, we have our field house, a central green area, aquatic center, um, all area for the botanical community gardens for natural preserve areas using the existing wetlands, as well as a cafe that's attached um, close to the botanical uh, and the community gardens. On the northeast quadrant, you have your dog park and the racket club, as well as your green opportunities for the green space and playground. And here you see some of the activity nodes um, and some of the existing historical ones. Okay, and you see your accessibility kind of a one, mile, one minute walk 
compared to your five minute walk. Technical difficulties, it's very heavy. Okay, now for, did I skip a concept? No. For, did I skip D? Yeah. Okay, so I could talk to you guys too on it. Uh, so D actually has, yep, there is. Uh, <laughs> see that screen is showing something. So he gave a bit of options out there. Give me one second. Thank you for bearing with us. All right, for concept D. So for this alternative, we have the Northwest Quadrant hosting a short course, a six, nine, and 12, with the driving range and located near I-95. And then you have the short game area as well as the clubhouse. And on the Southwest Quadrant, you have an expansion of that golf course as well as a field house, central green space, aquatic center, and room for open green space as well. On your northeast quadrant, we have our botanical garden, our community garden, our dog park, open green, uh, open green space, as well as our cafe near our community garden. And on the southeast quadrant, you will have your racket club closest to the railroad expansion, as well as open green space. So you'll see the activity nodes as well, representing the activity areas. Okay. All right, and then the I'll just show you the one minute and your five minute walk is really what we're missing here. But. Yeah. I don't know why it stopped glitching now. Okay, so. What I'll do is we'll go to concept D if you go look over here, um, if you could do that. All right, so concept D, what we've got here is um, golf is primarily focused on the east side of Ocean Breeze. On the north uh, east quadrant is a nine hole executive course. On the south side would be the clubhouse, the, the golf training facility, as well as the driving range. Then as we move into the northwest quadrant, 
This is more focused on, again, passive uh, activities. Um, we have the dog park located along Clintmore. And then we have the botanical as well as community garden located throughout, as well as open space, uh, the trails, and the playground facility. And then to really um, build upon what would be done and grown in the community garden, we would have the cafe and such embraced in that, in that location. Um, the southwest quadrant would have the open green space, the field house and aquatic facility, as well as open space and playground. And then the racket uh, facility, racket club, would be over near I-95. And I, I think somebody asked about D, if we could just do D real quick again. Okay. So concept D. Concept D is the golf is a short course, but with the many more holes. The six, the nine, and the 12 hole option. And that spans from the northwest quadrant to the southwest quadrant. It also has the clubhouse, training facility and driving range in the northwest quadrant. Then in the southeast quadrant, in addition to the golf course, we have open space and, um, and the play area. We have the central green, and we also have the field house and aquatic facility there. And then in the south um, east quadrant, we have the racket facility, open space, and playground areas, okay? And the northeast, northeast up here is the, uh, the dog park, the botanical and community garden, as well as the cafe, tied into that. So again, that cafe is really kind of tied into that community garden, kind of food to table is a, is a, is a, um, a process that's been, you know, really starting to be embraced. So, with that, we have the, okay, now we're gonna go back up here, just real quick. So concept E, if we look at the activity nodes, where those activity nodes are right now, or be, would be proposed primarily through Jeffrey Street area, and then up in that Northwest quadrant in the central core. Accessibility from a one minute walk perspective, shown here, and then in the five minute walk. Okay. Okay. So that was a lot to, to take in. So we know that what we would like, what we'd like you to do, and we're going to hand out um, some more stickers as well as a note card. Okay. And what we're going to ask you to do is number one, take your blue sticker that you get and pick the concept you like the most. Doesn't have to be perfect, just the one you like the most, okay? All right? Second thing is, on any of the concepts, whatever concept it is, and this is key, you're gonna really be great, you know, you're gonna put it on the thing that you like in the place that you like, okay? If there's an element in here that you like in the location you like, put a green sticker on that, okay? And the last thing is, is a red sticker. The one thing you don't like where it is, put that red sticker on there. And we're gonna, you're also, in addition to your stickers, you're gonna get a card. Write on there why you don't like that in that location. Okay? That's critical. Okay? All right. So we have five concepts over here, same over here. So we can kind of just split half and half and uh, do the activity. So I think they're handing everything out now. These, um, so they were, the question was parking. So number 12, these white bubbles are the proposed parking areas. And again, these are just conceptual locations of where they were, but they have to be in relation to accessibility from a roadway as well as the facility they're going to serve okay so when you fill out your little card of the thing you don't like where it is take that card and they see the little envelope that's up on the wall there put that in that envelope for us okay 
All right, we'll be walking around if there's any questions. Just, just a reminder, the blue sticker on the concept you like up above it, right in that white spot above it, green on the on any plan you want, because of on top of the element you like in the location it is, and the red on the item you don't like in the location it is, and write the reason why on the card. I just launched the polls online for pick your favorite option. That's multiple choice. The following question is, which is your favorite element from each uh, from what concept? It doesn't ha necessarily have to be from your favorite concept. And then what is your least favorite element or something that you do not like at all from another concept? Um, and please write the reason why. And I think there's some comments. Let me see if I could address them right now. Thank you guys for your patience. I'm going to go over the presentation and share the concepts so you guys can individually see it as you're voting in the polls.
Okay, just showing you concept, I believe concept A, so just a refresher for everybody online. You have your golf being a short course component on your southwest quadrant. And as well as your components for your field house and central park on your southeast quadrant, your racket club and your aquatic center on your northeast quadrant, the dog park and the community garden and botanical garden on your northwest quadrant. Oops. My apologies. Guys can see it now? Okay. I'm going to leave concept A for a bit up so it can be more clear. Again, all this would also be shared on our Ocean Breeze website. So there's an opportunity for that. Okay, concept B. It has, again, the short course on your southwest quadrant, but this time it's a 6, 9, and 12 hole. You have an, a bit of an expansion up on your northwest quadrant. You have your dog park and your green open space as well on your northwest quadrant. And then for this concept, you have your the racket Club and aquatic center are similar to concept A. The difference is that your field house and your open central green space, your botanical garden and green space are in your southeast quadrant. For concept C, Chosen between golf, a nine hole executive in your southwest and southeast quadrant with a driving range on closer to the train tracks. You have your field house, central space, aquatic center with botanical garden, community center on your top northwest quadrant. And on your northeast quadrant, you have the dog park and racket club as well as open green space. For your concept D, you have golf component, the bigger, larger part of the golf on your northwest quadrant, again, being a short course with 6, 9, and 12 hole, your driving range closer to I-95, and then a bit of an expansion to, to be able to fit the 6, 9, and 12 hole on your southwest quadrant. Closer to I-95 away, uh, closer to the noise away from the residence is your field house, aquatic center, and then you have a central green space as well as some open green um, playground areas. And on your northeast quadrant, you have the botanical garden, the cafe, community garden, and the dog park with some open green space and playgrounds. On the southeast quadrant, you have the racket club and the open green space and playgrounds. Okay. On concept E, you have a consolidation of the golf being a nine hole executive course on the linear quadrants of the northeast and the southeast with the driving range on the southeast with the short game, the clubhouse. And you have on your northwest quadrant uh, a lot of open green space between the botanical garden, community garden, the dog park, a cafe and playgrounds. 
on your southwest quadrant closer to I-95, you have your racket club, you have a field house, a central green, an aquatic center where there was an existing historical acti activity node. So I'll leave that option up for a little bit. And I'm gonna start launching, we're gonna be talking about this, but we're, I'm gonna start launching the speaker cards. If you wish to speak, please sign up. You will take turns between the people that are um, in, in person. And then after the speaker card, you'll also have a comment card. Um, if you wish to leave a comment or leave your commentary, if you weren't able to use the poll. And before I leave, I will put an email out so you could um, give your options or let us know that you weren't able to complete the survey. Okay, oh, just a sec. Everybody pretty much done? Because we want to get to public speaking, public comments. All right. So about uh,
Okay, we're going to start uh, public comments because we want to make sure as many people as possible can get in here. And we're going to have, we have speaker cards here that people have signed in for speaking and And we can set this for two minutes. Okay, and our first speaker is Rodrigo Vanegas. Rodrigo, are you here? Rodrigo going once. Okay, I think he's gone. Next is Garth Duff Gray. Garth. Okay. Garth is here? No. Okay. Jackie Glissman. Jackie. Jackie's up. Good evening, everybody. I live in Northwest 4th Avenue, which is right by the lake. And it's a residential single family home area. There are three streets where there's only single family residences. And um, I would like to consider that everything that we have been voting for Think about this. This is not the private development for us residents of the area. This is a public. It will be public, meaning everybody from different areas from all over the peninsula, they are going to be coming over and visiting this place. It's just not for us. That means that the, the uh, level of tourism is going to increase substantially. And the traffic is also going to be increasing. Right now, we have a very peaceful, relatively speaking, peace and quiet in our streets. And with all of this development, do we really want to fight traffic to get to our houses? It's going to be very well known. Um, and the prettier it is, and the most more wonderful it looks, the more the word is going to be uh, spread, and the more people we're going to have in our backyard. Uh, I also want to bring up the attention of security. This this. This development here, it has a, a lot of open spaces in between buildings where anybody can get through and those areas will not be closed, I've been told, by Boca Beach and Park District. They will not be fenced in. So the security is going to be an issue that we need to address with having all these people coming from different places in the peninsula in our town. In addition to that, for whoever voted on walking trails close by to the single family houses, I'm not too sure about privacy and security and then the increase traffic and people. I would like you guys to consider that. And uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say with finishing with the more expensive this is, it's going to reflect in our property taxes. Who's going to pay for this? Eventually we will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Regina Eklund, who's online. And just because we have some, we'll, we'll have some time constraints. But if you don't get to speak, you can always send an email to Brianne 
who is the executive director. That becomes public record. So um, Brianne has cards if you don't have her email um, and that, that we will get that information. Okay, okay, can you hear me? Regina? Hello, can you hear me? I have unmuted. Are you able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, my biggest concern in looking at the concepts, and they're all really good concepts, um, is the fact that you're building buildings out there. And our main goal when we went into this, and I think a goal of the Beach and Park District too, was to maintain green space. So I am a little bit um, disappointed to see a field house and an aquatic center um, and anything else that would put a lot any large buildings on this property. I'd like to see green space maintained. Uh, the other thing is the dog park. I remember when I was at the first workshop when dog park came up, uh, there was a bit of an outcry against it. So I find it interesting that now there is a dog park in every concept and I would like uh, perhaps some reconsideration on that. Um, many, many of our surrounding Boca Tica communities are no pet communities. Um, so the people bringing dogs probably don't even live nearby. So I'd like some reconsideration on that. But most importantly, I'd like to see uh, a real emphasis on green space and not on buildings. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next one is Stan Udine. Stan, he left. Okay. Uh, Rick, Rick Hurd. I saw him here. Okay. Uh, Angelo Sands. Thank you. Uh, Angelo Sands, 7348 East Country Club Boulevard, Boca, 33487. I don't have any stickers, okay? Uh, I, I guess the, the question I have is more for the staff here. Uh, um, I, I know at the last meeting with Beach and Park, I asked, you know, how, how are the numbers, in other words, how do we come upon these numbers? For example, all of these stickers, okay? Uh, when, when you're doing an analysis and on one setup you have four choices, and another setup you have five choices, another setup you have eight choices, how are those weighed? How are those weighed as far as uh, the the numeric power of each one of your choices, okay? Uh, the question I asked at the, the last speech in park was, uh, when when we you're looking at uh, the number of ways people in this community had a way of voting, has that been broken down so we as voters know, like for example, what was, what were, all of these different ways people could have voted, right? Some of us went to the meeting, some of us did online, some of it did it this way, some did it that way. All fine and dandy, all great. But how were those weighed? And, and do, do, were all the uh, votes the same? Were they all, you know, we don't know those things. And, and I think they've, you know, it's a, what we see is great. It's fantastic. Uh, you know, there's always the cost that anything that's under a roof is going to cost too much money probably. But the bottom line is that I would like to, I'm a numbers guy, okay? I would like to see how these numbers come together, okay? And I mentioned that at the last Beach of Park, okay? And I'm sorry I don't have any stickers, okay? Thank you, Angela. Uh, next one, Doug Davis. Doug here. Okay, how about Tom Vassell? Tom.
I'm Tom Vassell. Uh, live in Boca Raton, member of the uh, Boca Golf Association. When I was still young, I attended the first Beach and Park District meeting on the Ocean Breeze Boca National concept. <laughs> so our group urged Beach and Park, listen, follow a municipal golf course business plan. Make it affordable for the average guy. Make it playable for the average golfer. So all the, the people in Boca could enjoy it. Well, we got the Boca national concept. Very grandiose, very expensive. And now I'm old. And now <laughs> there is no development at all on Boca Tica and Ocean Breeze. So what I'm saying is we lost some good things over at the municipal golf course. We lost an executive nine hole course. Very nice. A convenient driving range, a putting green that for practice. And we lost all of that. So this is the perfect place to put it back. Executive nine hole course, a putting green, a practice area. And also one of the other things we lost that the uh, municipal course was a huge parking lot. We had a big lot that can accommodate a lot of cars. I don't see much parking in some of these uh, proposals here today. And I think it's very important. Safety is an issue at that intersection there at the uh, Ocean Breeze. So I think you got to work that in there. And I hope the heck you can work golf in there because everybody's for it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one, Robert Ducate. Ducate. Okay. How about? Oh, I'm out of time. Um, Angela Mazoe. Mazoe. Maisie. I apologize. Thank you. Hi, I'm Angela Maisie. I live on 64th Street. Um, which is one of the um, housing uh, residential streets that are of the three streets. And on our street, we have about eight small children, um, all under the age of eight. And so right now we have quiet enjoyment of the use of our land, and we don't have a bunch of people walking around that don't belong there. Um, and so we want to make sure that that remains a safe place for our families. Um, there is one issue that <clears throat> already has come up where they put a fence on 64th Street and it used to have a swale so we could get out of the way of traffic. And every single concept now has a parking lot at the end of 64th Street, almost to Second Avenue. Um, and so that's going to increase the traffic a lot and we have no sidewalk or no way to get out of the way of the cars. Uh, it's just the two lane street. Uh, the other safety issue that I've noticed for years, and, and I hope this will be addressed as well, is that underneath of Jeffrey Street, where the golf court cart path is, um, there's a lot of flooding that occurs, and it sits like a pool of water, and nobody monitors that. And so it's in my pool, I have to have a fence around that to protect from drowning. You know, this this thing also needs to be addressed, and I don't see anything, and I haven't heard about that, and that may not be the job of the uh, planners, but those are some things that need to be considered. And like you say, safety is an issue uh, from Jeffrey Street and 2nd Avenue, and with this new uh, parking lot that's proposed, uh, not only on my street, but on the other residential streets, uh, that's gonna be an issue now coming up on those areas. So we really would request that um, those considerations be given. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, next one is Joel Rask. Joel? Hey, my name is Joel Rascal. I live at 485 Northwest 69th Street in Boca Raton. I know I've annoyed the commissioners enough with what I'd like to see there. 
Um, I'm a big advocate for youth golf. Um, I know a lot of these concepts, a single nine hole course will be overrun real quick. Like you said, probably 40,000 rounds a year. I'd like to see some second, like kind of what they're doing up at West Palm or a place called Belmont I've talked where they've got a nine hole course along with a little short course, like 500. So, you know, kid gets out of school, they go try and get a tee time and it's full. But, you know, the short course, they could just walk on there and play whenever they want to have a kids league as well. Um, and, I, and you can do that with Concept D. That Belmont is 100 acres total and they've got 12 holes. Everyone's seen people have seen that. You could do that easily with Concept D. That's more than a plan to hold that on. But that's kind of where I'm at is um, getting some for the kids, really, and making sure they have availability 24, not 24 7, but they get out of school. They don't have to go away for a tee time, overpay, or does it all? We can't play a Taylor range is full. So that's kind of where I'm at as far as the youth golf concept of it. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. All right. Next one is Tom Judge. Tom. Hi there, I'm Tom Judge, Hidden Lake POA, past 25 years. I echo some of Joel's remarks with the kids, and I think it's really important for them to learn the game of golf and play it. Also, I echo what Jackie said earlier about the safety issue. We definitely, I think, from former being a former law enforcement officer for 25 years, PD needs to put a substation up that way, and that will definitely help in resolve any issues forthcoming. Um, infrastructure is going to be huge, uh, ADA compliant, huge, uh, but safety is number one in my book. Um, and I love the idea of what the remarks were said about the uh, golf part. Uh, and yeah, I think there's a, a great potential here in Boca. And I think that, uh, it is a little bit above and beyond, but why not, you know, go for it. And I wish uh, Boca a lot of luck with it. And I'm here to support it. Thanks. Um, next speaker, Lee. And I can't really remember, count, County Rice. Okay. Brian Paulowski. Paulowski. Okay. Next one, Donna Cass. Donna Koss. Okay. Wayne Whitfield. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Uh, Wayne Whitfield, 5620 Northwest Third Terrace, right in the middle of it all. Um, a lot of great points everyone brought up. My concern is as I've reiterated before, safety being priority along with privacy. Um, so whatever the concepts are, I've voted my preference. However, I hope hopefully a buffer of some sort will be taken into consideration uh, for those of us that will be impacted the most. Um, and hopefully it goes the way I voted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. We have a couple more, so if you can uh, bear with us, we're just about three minutes over, so we have a few more minutes. Aida Gallagher. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, I live at um, 6100. Northwest 2nd Avenue, <clears throat> and I just moved down in November um, with my daughter and husband. However, I did live at 5340 back in the 80s when they had the Ocean Breeze Country Club and the golf course, and I looked out my window. I'm sorry, I do have <clears throat> laryngitis. Heaven, I was on the fifth floor facing the railroad, and um, I would say that having the golf course and the country club and the amenities above were delightful. 
I enjoyed it very much. I'm a people's person. Anybody who walks down my path, I have a dog, uh, I say hello to, whether you say hello to me or not, because I need that camaraderie. Everything proposed tonight sounds good. It's overwhelming. It's a lot. It may not be safe in all cases, but it can be. And the things that we have been authored, I think, add to our property. Um, there will be an expense. I don't think it should be overwhelming. And um, I just like the whole idea that <clears throat> in the past, when they wanted to build townhouses around the perimeter on both sides, west and east, we were going to be overwhelmed by other people living in our backyard. Here, at least, we are having amenities for ourselves. And as I said, maybe we don't have to have as many, but what we do have and what they do offer us, and we have a choice and we can vote, I'd appreciate it because I think I'll enjoy it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and the last card we have is Katie Pulowski. Okay. All right. That was our last speaker card. Anybody? Oh, we have some others. Okay. Okay. Hi, my name is Harold Chaffee. I'm the president of Keith Golf and Boca. Listen, I looked at all the things on these plays, and I, I remember all the, uh, the surveys that we took. Oh. I remember all the surveys that we took, you know, and I wrote all the things down before I came here, what the percentages were. Some of these things never, never on the, on the thing. Uh, aquatic center, you know, all these tremendously expensive items. And then the indoor tennis courts, indoor uh, uh, racquetball. I and mean, they're all nice items, but we're never going to get them. They're just too expensive. You know, we're not realistic. But like I said, the, some of the items here, they're not even on it, but they're on every one of those. It's more like forcing us, forcing us to accept these things, like the aquatic center. I don't have enough stickers to put on somebody to, to say I don't want it. You know, you got you got the, the Swoon Racket Club, which is underused, which is run by the beach and parks. Okay, and we're going to build an, another unit here. We have we have 27, I think 27 tennis courts over at Swoon Racket also. You know, did anybody do a feasibility stuff on, on, on duplication here? You know. And, and, you know, and the object in the beginning was to save green space, you know, we, we got more buildings on this property than anything else. And it was supposed to be basic for recreation. And that was all not so somebody could build something and make money on it. You know, these items here, like I said, that's, I think we have a long way to go. You know, I'm glad everybody came, you know, like I said, it's, it's another step in the right direction, but uh, I was very surprised with the items that are on here. You know, they were not on the survey. They, if they were, they were on the bottom. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, next speaker is Jack McWalter. And that's our last speaker here. Yeah, Jack McWalter, 1100 Northeast Second Terrace. Um, some of you know me, know Harold, Harold knows me. And uh, I write articles for Boca Watch. We've been around for about eight years doing uh, uh, articles on the park district, the schools, and our kids. Um, first thing I'd like to do is I think we should thank the park commissioners. There's a couple of them sitting in here. These are volunteers. There's Aaron right back there. We should all give a hand to them, you know. And it, they're volunteers, and they, they must spend 30, 40 hours a week on these things. The first thing I want to comment, I, I'll be real fast. Who's going to pay for this? This is absurd. I don't mean to be that critical, but uh, the, the, the city just got donated the Boca Municipal course from the Boca Resort. The first thing they did, they're going to fill the pool in with dirt, and, and we're going to build an aquatic center. Um, 
it just doesn't make any sense. I think I think what's more important, I think, would be uh, if you could in the next meeting include the city's input, what they think, uh, how this is going to be paid. Is this going to be a private public partnership for many of these things? I think that ought to be an open switch that we should talk, spend a lot of time talking about. Um, but uh, regarding the walking and the dogs and all that stuff, other golf courses find that to be a nightmare, having people walking on the course uh, accidentally. Um, and that, that's really the, the last thing. Other than the Jeffrey Street, I, I don't understand that. FEC said they were not going to put a crossing there. So I don't see how this goes through to Jeffrey Street. That'd be something that, you know, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And we are over time. So again, I want to thank everybody for attending. It was really helpful and great to hear your input and look forward to the next steps with you. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank you all online still holding on. We'll be short off. I will share Brianne's email and my email. Yeah, 35. Hello. Hello. Hey, just before you go, anybody lives in Northwest, the 64th Street? All right. Have you guys seen a white pickup truck tearing the place apart? Kids? During the day, they just go in. Have you seen that? Okay. I, it's just that I talked to some of your neighbors and yeah, they seen this white pickup truck just tearing the place apart. These kids, they show up at 11 o'clock at night. Just wanted to see if anybody else has seen them besides this neighbor and myself. Aha, okay. Okay. At this time, I'm going to sign off. You have two emails online, and please be sure to visit our website as well. Have a lovely evening. Hi, uh, it's Angelo again. Uh, I live on West 7348 East Country Club Boulevard. On the 4th of July, we have a huge party. We have hundreds of American flags out there. You might have passed our home on some on the fourth, and it'll be the same this year. And we we have signs out there, honk for the USA. So you or your neighbors, I just kind of remember on the fourth of July to head up East Country Club Boulevard and beep your horn for the USA. Good announcement, right? Oh yeah. <laughs>